This is an unboxing of a Mead telescope. It's a refractor. The model is a DS210 280TC. And uh, the aperture is 4 inch. So for a refractor, 4 inch is really good. Focal length is 800 millimeters. So F number or focal ratio is 7.7. .7. It's not a short tube. So it should not have much aberration problem. So let's open it and see. It comes with a um, auto star guider. It finds the things for you. So as they describe it. Let's open it. Okay, something interesting. You usually see these flaps just this width, but this is a whole length flap. And it opens like that. And it goes inside when you want to close it. Okay, let me just show what is inside. Oh, everything is nicely packed. As you can see. Oh, we came first to the gym. That's the mount or the head. That is where the telescope is attached. So it looks almost like new. Um, so this is the other part of it, which flap clicks on it, clamps on it and holds the tube. Impressive. And uh, yeah, it has the usual connections. So it must be operating with the battery. Hmm. Let's see the rest of it. Okay, I'll put this back here. And the second part, second box is a massive tray, accessory tray. So it has a space for one, two, three eyepieces. And also a, a space for hanging the uh, control, auto star control. So let me remove those. Uh, I will look at this and remove the. Oh, that's the actual tube. It's massive. Look at this. It's huge. Um, let me see if I can show you. This lens, multi-coated. So I'm putting the dust cap back. And this is the other end, the focuser end. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can actually attach two inch eyepieces to here, I hope. That means. Okay, one of the screws unfortunately has broken here, as you can see. And the screws look plastic, so they made it cheap these days. Anyway, let's see what's the rest of this. On that part of the screw, it was broken during transport. Okay, I've removed the top layer and now we are in the bottom layer. What you see here is that the actual mount, the tripod, sorry, mount was that one. This is the tripod and the silicon gel. Okay, that's the mount. And this is. Cable, quite costly to buy it. So eyepiece, uh, that's a series two thousand uh, four thousand uh, super plus so twenty six millimeter at least twenty pound it is on its own. There's a red dot finder, which operates with a battery. Let me see if it works. Oh yeah, the switch is here. Uh, I 
think it has finished its battery, but anyway, not a problem, we can add it. It's a star diagonal, as you can see. Here's some attachments. Oh, the battery, extra battery for the diagonal. This is another eyepiece. This is a series 4000. 9.7 okay and that is the cap I think for that telescope end it was okay. or for one of the probably a star diagonals anyway so this was one pack There is the mid diagonal. Uh, sorry, manual guide, instruction manual for the auto guider. This is something just uh, maybe there was something original in it, but now it is in the other parts. And these are also empty spacers. Oh, something inside here. I can guess what is it. Wait and see. Yes, the beautiful meat auto star. This on its own is around 100 pounds, uh, or at least 80 pounds. And oh God, all the rest go very cheap. Yes, right around 50 pounds. Uh, yeah, everything looks right. Let's just put it together and have a look. Put a bubble level. Okay, this is the mead and is now operating. And I pointed it at the background of the sky and uh, some leaves. And that's where you actually see some purple fringing with any refractor. With my sky watcher, you can definitely see that. With this one. Absolutely no purple fringing or chromatic aberration. I wish my hand were steady to show you how clear is this image. Image quality is superb. This telescope is not a ED telescope, it's not a upper chromatic telescope, but the image it gives is is a like an upper. It's really the best telescope. Best refractor that I have actually. <laughs> and uh, mechanically it's plastic everything and the mount is flimsy as you can see. The auto guide works actually, and is really good. And and little nagging is that you cannot actually loosen up the azimuth and just turn it by hand. You have to use the like a celestine. You have to use the control. But the altitude you can use this. I'm saying you this is this is good value. They're selling this with the in Costco originally for for a really discount price. And you read and online that people have complained about being flimsy plastic issue. But optically, they have not compromised on that. Mead, so far, with any telescope from Mead I have seen, optically they're perfect. I cannot say that about the Celestron or Skywatcher. Mead is the best. Really amazed and surprised by the quality of the optics of this telescope. It's amazing. It's upper chromatic practically. I don't see any fringing, any purple fringing or uh, chromatic aberration. What I'm thinking about is that uh, Mead may be trying to make cheap telescopes with the uh, aluminium and uh, plastics used all to make it cheap, 
casting is easy for plastics than casting for metal and they weigh less also transport is easier but they have not compromised on the optics i think they want to bring the people into the field of astronomy they don't make the telescopes as a sturdy at this level entry levels as a sturdy as they used to be but they make it optically superb so the the kid the youngest the budding astronomer who uses this will not get a bad experience and that's what we want optics you can i mean if you buy such a telescope you can remove the tube and install it on your own mount you can even take the um this part which is the focuser and put it on your own you can do all that the optics of it is perfect I have not seen a reflector like that. I have an ED reflector, 72 millimeter sky watcher. That gives some fringing. And also the focus of it is very limited, so you have to really be careful. Focusing distance is really tricky with that. And with this one, oh, super, super beautiful. I recommend this. Uh, one of these compasses and bubble levels with a mid telescope. Any mid telescope, will, this technique applies. This is the size of the eyepiece holder. You just put it there. And you have to level the telescope. This bubble should come at the center. So when you rise the telescope or bring it down, the tube, it will come at the center. Then you can turn it in a way that the north, that N, letter N, which is written, will align with the needle of the compass, the red parts of it. So. Practically, this is north. The red part is always north. South is that direction. Simple as that. Okay, now I have modified my um, Meet ETX uh, uh, 125 to accept. Gives a better result. Looks heavier. 